everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. This week I'm going to paint a wonderful little snow scene. I had it on my Facebook page for a while and I got so many compliments and so many requests to paint it. Um, so I'm going to paint it again and show you my process and show you how I did it. So yes, a lovely little snow scene today. I hope you enjoy um, these lovely tutorials and I hope you're getting enjoyment from them and you're learning from them um, I hope you're keeping them very very safe as well and keeping out of harm's way um, you know just try and keep safe and uh, you know don't be getting don't be getting too close to other people as they say um, you know with these dangerous times and this coronavirus and everything else just be careful all right and stay safe out there and plenty of painting plenty of painting really really helps doesn't it so let's go and have a bit of fun with this. This is going to be a nice one. Um, I already have one painted. So I copied exactly the same. I showed exactly the same way I did it. It's actually very, very simple. And it's just a few basic techniques. Um, but you can create a real dramatic painting just by a simple couple, couple of simple techniques. Okay? Um, yes, that's it. I have the other one on my Patreon page if you want to go and check that out. Do I have it here somewhere? Um, oh yes, it's down here. I painted this one just yesterday. Isn't that gorgeous? And I put in the footsteps. I left out the footsteps by accident, so I put them back in. Um, but that's a lovely painting, isn't it? Really eye-catching. So, that's on my Patreon page if you want to go and have a look. Over there. It's really lovely, isn't it, with that light really gorgeous so that's it grab your stuff let's go and have a bit of fun with this try and follow me along if you can um if you don't want to just enjoy the painting and chill out grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and uh, let's have a bit of fun with this okay here we go this is my canvas um it's 16 by 12. i haven't primed it it's lovely and dry um not lovely and dry but i normally prime my canvases once or twice or i might give them a coat of oil linseed oil or something or some turpentine but for this particular painting i want the dryness of the canvas okay um to soak the paint in to get some nice effects um do you know it, it changes from week to week the canvas is not exactly prepared the same way every single time so it's a very dryish kind of a canvas um you can just work on your regular canvas just fine as well okay now my colors i have titanium white naples yellow some cerulean blue this is a new blue that i've added to my palette every now and again just to get some nice um soft blues some phthalo blue a little alizarin crimson some burnt umber burnt cyanide and some black and there's a reference photograph isn't that lovely it's very very nice indeed isn't it it's a very simple scene yes it's um it's beautiful isn't it so let's see if you can create this now in a simple way i'm going to bring the horizon line across here and what i mean by the horizon line is that line of the trees where the lake meets the land okay off in the distance okay that's the line and i'm going to do a quick sketch here of the snowy bank look with all the bits of rocks and all that kind of stuff um that's it i think i'll do a very rough sketch of some trees off in the distance there look um we do have a mountain kind of up in the background i'm not going to put that in i'm just going to leave it as a distant row of trees going way off into the distance yes now top in time a little top in time and some tissue okay everyone let's go let's have a bit of fun I'm going to use my large stubby brush, and this is getting really worn, you see it? Isn't it lovely? Nice worn stubby brush, or any large kind of a flat brush look, that's just a very rough brush. Anything at all, just to cover a big area. I'm going to dampen this. <coughs> now, my apologies, I'm going to take a sup of tea. Because you need a sup of tea, don't you? Or a sup of coffee. Just to relax, chill out, enjoy a bit of painting. I'm going to do a nice soft sky in this. I'm going to take some phthalo blue. And I'm going to take some cerulean blue and some white. Lots, lots and lots of white. Um, now, you could use cobalt blue for that as well if you wanted. <clears throat> but I'm just going to take some cerulean, some white, a little phthalo. And then what I might put into that, because 
It's a very warm blue. I'm going to take a hint of crimson, okay? Just to warm it ever so slightly. Now, it's a nice, thin, creamy consistency. That's what I am going for. Okay, give it a good mix up. And let's try this. There, that's not bad. I'm happy enough with that. I go with that colour for the top. And I just put it across the top like this very quickly. Look, you see how quickly I'm doing this now. I'm just putting it right on. I'm not thinking about anything too much. And as it comes down, it's going to lighten slightly. And it's almost soaking into the canvas immediately. I don't mind that. That's okay. It's nice to work on a dry canvas too from time to time. I'll take a little crimson. I'll take plenty of turpentine again. Now, the thing is, your canvas may not be as dry as this, okay? So I'm think keeping that in mind. So you will probably get a lot more off your paint. It'll go much further than my one here. So that's fine, okay? Um, everybody's canvas is different. You know what I mean? No two canvases are exactly the same. So depending on what kind of canvas you're using at home, just basically add as much or as little turpentine as you need, okay? But I just want to cover the sky fairly loosely and fairly quickly. You see what I mean? So it's just graduating from a light colour right down to a dark colour. Or right up to a dark colour. You see? Very, 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 very light. Now, I'm just going to take some white on its own. And I'm going to pop some of that. There's a little bit, blue, a little bit of blue on my brush still, you see? And just bring that right down there to your horizon line, all the way across. And my mix is quite thin. It's really, really quite thin now, I have to be honest. I'm going to take some white, and I'm going to pop some white over some of the marks. You get these sort of marks on the canvas sometimes where the paint doesn't quite cover. Especially with a cheaper canvas. I mean, it's this is a slightly cheaper canvas now because it's only for tutorials purposes, okay? Um, you know, you can use a very expensive canvas if you like. But I would use an expensive canvas if I was set on selling something. This probably, I probably won't sell it to be quite honest. I just leave it hanging on my wall as a tutorial um, painting. So nice and light at the bottom, look, and leave it gently dark as it comes up. Now that's all I need, okay? Nice and simple, okay? You can see that, okay? You can. And I know this is slightly kind of more on the greeny side than in the reference photograph. I would say in the reference photograph you might get away with using some cobalt blue, perhaps. I'm just going to take a little darker colour. I'll take some thalo blue and a little crimson and just pop some of that across the top, okay? I just want it slightly darker up in the top little piece, just across the top and soften it down. Now, let's, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to start putting in the darks of the trees, okay? I'll use the same brush. I'm going to dampen it slightly. I'm going to make a nice dark mix now of phthalo blue, some crimson, Okay, and I'm going to take a hint of burnt umber, all right? A tiny, tiny, tiny hint of burnt umber. And I want plenty of red in this as well. And I'll also take a hint of white. So I'm going for kind of a dark, not a purpley bluey, a kind of a nice grey blue kind of a shadow colour. But it's warm. I'm adding plenty of crimson to keep it nice and warm. I don't want it cold, all right? And let me just try this first. No, that's not bad. I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to go right up to the right-hand side here. Look, dab, 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 dab. And all I'm doing is just creating the impression of treetops. That's all. I'm going to fill it in down here normally. Because I'm sure, I'm sure you know what we're going to do in just a moment. So let me just fill that in all the way down, like that. Dab, dab, dab. As it comes over further, I'm going to start adding more white into it, okay? And a little bit more pink. And it's going to almost disappear, sort of, off into the distance. Okay, so I'm going to take more white, a bit more pink. And it's going to sort of disappear off, 
out of the painting and off into the distance, okay? Come right down there to the horizon line. I'm going around in circles. I'm basically just trying to fill in the canvas all the way down, okay? Now let, you can even soften this up into the sky here and there as well. You see? Create a nice kind of a misty effect off in the distance. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take a hint of burnt umber, with a hint of crimson, and a hint of the blue. Okay, now not much burnt umber in this. Just a touch. I want to just make it slightly darker towards the bottom, alright? Because things like this normally tend to get darker as they come down towards the river bank. So I'm just going to darken it slightly, you see, just very loosely, and then sort of soften it up. And don't be too particular with this because we're going to cover this with some snow in a moment. So it's a nice dark lying down at the bottom of the canvas where it meets the water's edge nice and dark, okay? And I'm holding my brush in an upright fashion like this. See, just dab, 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 dab. And we already have a nice row of trees, don't we? Now let's put a little bit of snow on these trees. I know that looks okay, but I have snow on the other one. Um, I'm looking at it, yeah, there's snow on the other one. So I'm gonna take a different brush. I am gonna go for a slightly flatter kind of a, a stubby brush, <clears throat> okay? And let me just dampen that slightly. Um, any regular kind of a flat brush. You could try a fan brush for this. I made it a fan brush as well. But I'm just going to take some white and a little of the cerulean blue. And with that, just paint, okay? I am going to start with some of the more prominent. You see my brush is at an angle. I'm holding it at an angle, you see? Right? It's just... It's not stuck out like that, it's in slightly. And I'm just holding it at an angle and then coming down like this at an angle, okay? Just to kind of show the bright side of the tree with the snow. So it's just sort of one side of the tree that I'm actually painting. Do you understand? Now, you could come down a little bit on, on the other side if you wish. Just a hint. And in the distance, I'm just going to kind of dab very gently here and there just to give the impression of a tiny amount of snow off in the distance, you see? Okay, so you can see now we just have a nice simple impression of some snow-covered trees in the distance. And you can make this as prominent as you want. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want. It's completely up to yourself, okay? Let me go up here now and do this again. I'm just using the kind of random edge of the brush to create this texture, that's all. It's really very simple, okay? Let's try this one. So I'll just take another bit of paint. I have very little paint on my brush. It's a very dry brush. It's just the tip of the brush which has this paint on it, okay? And I'm just dabbing a little snow here and there. I'm not being too fussy. Okay, how's that? Some nice little snowy trees off in the distance. Simple, but effective. Right, I think water next. <clears throat> now, isn't this lovely and simple? It's a nice simple uh, impression of the scene that we're painting. The water is quite simple. Let's take a little cerulean blue, some, co uh, some thalo blue, like what we use for the sky. Okay, take plenty of white and plenty of turpentine and take a little more phthalo blue and that and I'll take a hint of crimson because remember they are quite warm. Let me just have a look. Now I want to go darker than that, okay? So let's take a bit more phthalo blue and a bit more crimson and again a little more phthalo Okay, I'm happy enough with that. Perhaps a little more red. And I'm going to go along under that and pull down 
my reflections look. It's quite simple, just pull them down like this. And because these are going up at that angle, these ones are going to come down at this angle, okay? In the reflection. Just copy what's above it and copy the direction of it as well. Now I'll just go all that far, keep it simple. I'm just going to dry my brush very quickly with some tissue and I'm going to put in the lighter reflections with some pink and white over here. Look. And soften it across. You can put a hint of it here and there too, look. You see? How's that? Now you could put a suggestion of the reflection of the snow. Let's just take a little bit of white with the same brush and let's just pull it down, look. Nice and gentle. It doesn't even show in the photograph anyway, so you don't really have to do this. But I think it's a nice suggestion of the reflection, don't you? Now I'm going to clean that, I'm cleaning that brush, okay? Just give this brush a really good clean. Just dip it in your, your top and tie and give it a good clean on your tissue. I have a nice clean brush again. I'm going to put in a nice lighter colour here. So dampen it slightly. Take plenty of white. And I'll take a hint of phthalo. And I'm going to put that in. I don't want it too thin. And I'm coming down in my white section there. And then what I'm going to do is flick it upwards into that blue as well. And I'm going to soften it kind of up slightly. Just to kind of soften them together, you know what I mean? You could use our blender brush for this as well and just pull everything right down if you wish. But I kind of like the texture of the white um, in the photograph. It's, I don't know, in the last painting I did, it had that wonderful kind of texture on the water. I don't know how I achieved it, but it was something along these lines anyway, all right? In fact, you could even take a palette knife, right? And take some white and just drag some white down like this, okay? It just gives a nice, um, a nice kind of a texture on the water. I suppose it's nice as well for a change not to have it completely smooth or flat, you know? You can pull that down then, look. And flick it upwards. And how's that? Nice and simple. Now you could add more to it if you wish. Okay, you could keep going and let me just clean my knife now on some tissue because I have a little hint of a green on this knife. I'm going to take a little more of the white and I'm going to drag some more white. I want a nice bright kind of a reflection just here and there on that water. So I'm using the palette knife, look. Dragging it right down. And it does kind of give a nice sort of a shimmer here and there on the water, doesn't it? I'm using my wife's very expensive makeup brush, okay? Or powder brush, as it's known. I think it's called a powder brush. And don't tell your wife that you've taken these, okay? Don't tell her, because there'll be trouble. Now, let's just soften that down. Just to give the water a bit of texture, that's all. And at the same time, I'm going to take some white and a bit of the blue, and I'm going to go across under here. And let's just put a suggestion of just some light catching the water up high, okay? You see? There's a very nice kind of a light catching the water up there. And I'll just scrape it left and right, sort of blend it in, soften it in. That just gives a nice little shimmer as well, up in the distance, doesn't it? And I'm going to add a little bit more, just to make it a little more powerful on this side. Tiny bit of white. Like that. Okay? 
and then I lose my soft brush again and soften very very gently just barely touching the canvas okay just to take the the harshness off of it that's all and that's our reflection done and I think that's fine that's fine for what I need okay now I'm going to move down you see it's nice simple nice and simple isn't it doesn't have to be complicated I'm going to move down now and I'm going to fill in all this snowy area with just some white on its own and I'm going to cut up here and into the water where the snow is kind of all jagged now I do have a tiny bit of blue in there look just from your brush it doesn't have to be pure white uh, come over here fill that in <clears throat> because on the photograph it is just white isn't it but a slight shade down from white is nice because then you see what you can do is you can take your palette knife and you can add little chunks of white here and there look just to give it a feeling of actual snow nice thick impasto knife work you see and that really cuts away from the, the water and the reflections and it gives you a real nice separation and let's just put a piece back here so you can kind of get the idea um, I put a couple around here and we do have lots of kind of rocks now and all that kind of stuff going on as well so I'll just leave this just for a moment yeah let's get some nice little bits of it's not so much rocks it's like little clumps of ground which is showing through so I'm very simply going to take a little round brush okay some burnt umber and maybe a hint of black tiny tiny hint of black I'm just going to suggest little what I call bits and bobs bits and pieces you know what I mean it's just showing little things here and there popping through and just be nice and free and simple with this okay just you're not what I tend to say is you're not painting detail you're just suggesting that there's detail there okay just by telling the viewer that there's something there the viewer's brain will kind of fill in the blanks anyway and they will kind of make up their own mind as to what it is like a chunk of driftwood or um, a rock or something like that you know the viewer's brain will always fill in the missing pieces so don't try to um, portray that you're painting anything in particular it's just detail without painting detail that's my take on it all okay and i'll pop a little bit little bit of cyanide and put a little bit of cyanide say just around here look just it could be little bits of grass flicking up all right see just little bits and bits and pieces like that you see now and already we have a suggestion of little bits and pieces going on here and there and then you see what I'll do is I'll clean that brush then just give it a good clean or you could use a different brush and then just pick up some white and I pop some nice fresh white in underneath some of those and it's sort of mixing with the color here and there which is okay that's fine because that helps tie everything together okay when you pick up some bits of the color and drag it across on the canvas that helps pull everything together all right just remember that i take a bit more white there and put lots of thick white then here and there you see look just to suggest a very a very rough ground you know what i mean let's put a piece in under there that. 
but you can kind of get the idea you can see kind of what I'm trying to achieve I'm going to take a slightly larger brush I'm going to pop some thick white in here and there look just on its own drag it across flick it across with your brush again just creating some texture in the foreground that's all nothing else just a bit of texture because it is a very thick kind of a snowy bank anyway so let's just give it lots of thick snow now I'm going to go over that but in general you know it's just keeping it nice and simple isn't it And then I'll take a small detailed brush. Let's take a small pointy brush. And let's put in a few small little things here and there. Okay. Um, I'll put in a few little flicks here and there. Look. And a little few of these little bits and pieces on top. Let's put in a couple of little things here and there. You know, if anything, it's just to give a little detail that's all it's just to add little touches of detail here and there to it and it's just giving the impression again of just a very rough ground with some bits of grasses and stuff like that popping through here and there so I'll stick a couple of little Naples yellow ones over here look or could be little reeds and things like that very loose sort of reeds um, I'll add a little bit of snow here and there on some of those then I'm going to put a nice um, green kind of a tree on this side so I'm going to take some black and I need to get some cadmium yellow there's a very dark touch of green just on the right hand side over there I don't know if you can see it on the photograph but it's a very dark rich kind of a green tree a bit of phthalo blue some black and some yellow cadmium yellow okay and I'm just going to suggest an impression of a little bush okay Again, you could even use a palette knife for this. That would look quite nice as well. But I'm just trying to give a very loose impression of a little, little bushy kind of a tree just popping up here and there. And then let's even take the palette knife and give that some lighter colour. Let's take some blue and some yellow and pop a little bit of white in there. And let's suggest some light on some of these. You see, it's just an impression I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. Giving a little, little, little flick of colour here and there. Now, I'll take some black and add... You see, I'm moving through this quickly now because... You can take your time at home, just take your time. I'm just going through this because it's just a very quick representation of the, the painting which I did. And I'm just keeping it simple. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Keep it nice and simple. A couple of little flicks of branches popping out of it here and there. I'd put a little bit of snow on some of those. Be nice, wouldn't it? A couple of dabs of snow. And now we're already onto this lovely tree in the centre. This is kind of more or less the focal point, I think, isn't it? And for that, I'm just going to simply start with the very thick tree trunks. Okay. Some burnt on burn a little black and lots of turpentine. Now you may not need as much turpentine as me. But my canvas is very, very dry, so I'm adding loads and loads of turpentine into my mix. 
And let's start with this one here. It kind of bends over like that and it turns and it comes up. And I generally tend to put in darker colours first and then work in my lighter colours after that. So this darker colour now, just for the main branches, okay. Uh, put that like that, nice and thick at the bottom. Then we have a piece coming out beside it. Like so. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some black. I'm going to pop some black into the bottom. Down here. Okay. And I'm going to clean that brush now. Then I'm going to take some um, cyanide. I'm going to take plenty of cyanide with a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm going to pop some of that lighter colour in here and there, look, on top of that darker colour. And I'm going to start to soften it through. So now you can see that nice warm colour coming out, can't you? And a little bit over here, look, just dab it along here and there. So that's enough of that brush. I'm going to now switch to my small pointy brush. And let me see how I got my right, my correct brush here. Let me see. Uh, okay, ah. No, there it is. No, nice little small pointy brush. And I'm going to add a little bit more light here and there to some of this. Okay, just coming down like that. And I'll even use it going up and out on some of the branches, okay? It's a really nice warm colour, isn't it? Maybe some Naples yellow on its own, even, just to really show some of the bright colour. And then I'll take a little bit of black and suggest a little bit of black on some of the darker sides, all right? You see, just like so. And from here on in, basically, it's just a case of going crazy with lots of branches. All right? Lots and lots and lots of branches. And forming the tree, just forming the shape of all those little twigs and branches coming off. Now you can take your time with this at home, all right? Just take your time, there's no rush. You can spend hours and hours doing this at home if you like. I'll just do a quick uh, representation here. I can always carry on and do more later. But just to show you quickly, okay? You get the idea anyhow, don't you? I hope you do. And you come over here and do a couple off of this. You could spend really a very long time doing all this. It's so much fun. And I could quite happily sit here for another hour and a half easily, tipping away with all of this. So let's just pop in lots of little branches and twigs. So you see how easy now this scene was. I just kept it very simple. And you can put your own twist on this as well if you like. You could add lots more trees in the background or you could put some nice white clouds floating across the sky. You know, you could do all that. Um, you could even add lots of snow onto this tree if you wanted. And give it lots of snowy foliage. That's another nice idea, isn't it? Um, you know, I could, but I don't feel it needs lots of snowy foliage. I think it's just quite nice as it is, isn't it? I'm just going to 
pop lots of tiny little flicks in here and there just to help bulk up the branches and give it some shape just give it a little hint of some shape you see forming the curve on the top of the tree yeah. how about adding a touch of snow down at the very bottom let's take a little bit of white and just down here like that and I'll pop a little on that then I'll take my fan brush any old fan brush at all and give this a little curve and suggest the curvature of the tree trunk look now oh, look at that that's quite nice isn't it and in fact while we have our fan brush let's take some white and suggest some thick snow here and there just here and there very very loosely it just gives you a little bit more texture on the canvas that's all but you can of course just leave it kind of nice and smooth if you like the kind of smooth effect of the snow with a brush you can just leave it like that as well it's up to yourself and the next thing I'm going to do is I want to just pop in a little couple holding each other just right say next to the tree let's go next to the tree take some cyan out with some crimson and i'll paint the top half of one person um let's say around here okay a nice little suggestion all i'm doing is painting the top half of a carrot you know this i've done it many times and then clean your brush take a little bit of black and paint the bottom half of the carrot like this okay and put a little bit of hair on this person I'll give a hint of light just here and there you know just to suggest a little bit of light and then we put someone else next to this person let's try a little Naples yellow so nice warm colors and very same again and this one will have his arm around like that okay let's take some burnt umber and finish off that carrot there we go and a little head and how was that my friends so would you be happy enough now with that I think that's quite nice isn't it let's give it a signature and my friends thank you so much for watching again look you can add on all these little branches now add loads of them on yourself okay I'm gonna pop a little touch of snow here and there on some of them look just little dabs of white just where the snow may be resting in the corners okay just to give it a bit of oomph a bit of a lift and perhaps just a little 
touch of light on some of these on this leafy kind of a bush here and that my friends looks quite nice to me I have to say and that's how I created that lovely scene and then lovely and simple you soften some of these out if you want you don't have to but I'll soften some of them together and let me zoom in and show you what we have created in this wonderful painting do bear with me because I know you like me to zoom in and there we go isn't that just wonderful you see just a suggestion that's all little bits and pieces And there's the reflections, lovely snow in the distant trees, just keeping it nice and simple. And again, look, add lots and lots of little twigs here and there, okay? Take your time. And there we go. A nice, simple snow scene, everyone. I hope you like that. I hope now that you really enjoy that. Let me turn the camera. There we go. Now, that was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. That's I could paint these little scenes all day long. It's absolutely a joy to paint. Um, okay, I'll be back next week with another nice tutorial. Uh, something a little different, okay? We give, we, we give Snow a break for a couple of weeks. Maybe try some subjects. Um, still life, maybe like um, a black horse or something, or a tiger or something like that. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I, I'd see something like a building or a, something like that. So we'll see, a bridge maybe. We'll try something nice, okay? So enjoy painting. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe because I'm missing so much. And um, thank you so much, patrons, for your support as well. It really means a lot. Uh, God bless, and I will see you all very, very soon. Happy painting.